So hey guys, I am actually at the doctor's office right now, having my second surgical appointment with Dr. Jennifer Elliott. Hi guys, it's Lolita and what you just saw was me actually in the doctor's office getting my surgical consultation with Dr. Jennifer Elliott. She actually came into the room within like seconds of me sitting down so I wasn't able to actually film anything that was going on. My appointment was a pretty long appointment but it was very thorough. So let me just recap what happened during the appointment. Um, I had my um, MRI report sent over to her. I also had my disc with me and I brought that to the appointment. In addition, um, I had my um, gynecologist send over his report to her so she had all of the information that she needed to actually review what was going on. In addition to the information she didn't have, she verbally asked me a bunch of questions to see, you know, where I was, what I tried, what didn't work, what's currently happening, all that type of stuff. She was very, very, very thorough. <laughs> um, but what I did end up learning is that um, the largest fibroid is actually 20 centimeters and it's not 11 centimeters like I was told by the previous doctor. She says, I do have multiple fibroids that are um, over 10 centimeters, but the largest is 20. And then I have numerous, many, too many to count fibroids that are small between one to five centimeters. <laughs> um, so there's a lot going on. She actually said that the um, largest fibroid was as big as me being having a six month fetus in my stomach. And she didn't understand how I was hiding everything so well and why I look so tiny when I'm really, I have all of this going on. And it's just years years of dealing with this issue. I explained to her that I was absolutely tired of what was going on and I want um, relief. So we discussed every type of treatment option and um, we discussed a laparoscopic myomectomy. However, she felt that my fibroids were too big for laparoscopic surgery that I would have to have an open abdominal myomectomy if that was the case. Um, the other thing we talked about was a possible hysterectomy um, but that would be the absolute last result. In order to help determine or help me decide which way to go, we decided to check my ovarian reserves. And what's interesting was she was the very first doctor who ever recommended checking my ovarian reserves. I guess because she was the first female doctor that I've been to, first female surgeon that I've been to in a while. And so um, she decided that that would help me understand if I can still have kids or if the pop probability of me having kids has greatly decreased if I don't have any ovarian reserves left, which makes a lot of sense. So um, after the appointment, I went and had my um, blood drawn. And so the goal now is she is going to um, call me in a couple of days when we get the lab results back and I will find out if I can still have kids or not. And then in addition, we will discuss the surgical options again and I will pick one of them. At this very moment, um, I'm deciding I do not want a hysterectomy. Even if I don't have a lot of ovarian reserves and I can't have kids, I still don't want a hysterectomy at this point. So I think I'm just going to go with the open myomectomy. I know that the recovery time is going to be significant. Um, you know, four to six weeks, but it's something I need to get done because y'all, I'm trying to have a hot girl summer. I'm not trying to be walking around here in all these baggy clothes trying to camouflage what's going on. I want to wear crop tops just like everybody else, right? <laughs> so, and, and I don't want the pain and all of the symptoms and all that type of stuff too. So I will um, check back in with you in a couple of days after I talk to her. Hello everyone. So I have a quick update. I just got the telephone call from my doctor and all of my lab work came back just fine. My ovarian reserves are fine. My FSH and my AMH are within normal. So I still have a good ovarian reserve, which means possibly in the future, once I get all of these fibroids and endometriosis and all that type of stuff taken care of, <laughs> I should be able to conceive naturally. So that is really good news. I just wanted to hop on here and tell you guys my next step is I'm waiting for 
um, the doctor's office or the hospital to call me to actually um, go over how much the surgery is going to cost and to schedule it and you know all those details but I will definitely keep you guys posted I am very very happy right now essentially my doctor and I we decided that in abdominal myomectomy is the way we're going to go don't have to worry about um, removing the uterus the hysterectomy we don't have to worry about any of that like I'm really really excited